You're listening to News Talk 1400 KFRU. We don't always dabble as deeply in politics as we are this half hour, but I'm kind of having fun doing this. Frank Schaefer was lively and, and had his certain perspective, and we're going to hear another one now from Gwen Mandel. Is it Mandel or Mandel? It's Mandel. Mandel, coordinator of National Organizing for IndependentVoting.org. That's the website, IndependentVoting.org, which is a group that is a as self-described on that website, a national strategy, communications, and organizing center working to connect and empower the 40 percent of Americans who identify themselves as independents. Our mission is to develop a movement of independent voters for progressive post-partisan reform of the American political process. So, uh, Gwen, you deal in dreams. Is that right? <laughs> well, yes, David, and we deal in building a movement. Actually, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so glad to be speaking to you and your listeners about this very important topic. Good morning. We're looking between the lines at a group that has a lot of political power, but many in that group feel lacking in political rights. So it's now organizing in Ohio, independent voters. Uh, with us from the group Independent Ohio, Cynthia Carpatios and Franz Bauer, thanks for being here to explain your group's purpose and mission. Appreciate it. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Horizon's Vote 2012 coverage continues tonight with a closer look at independent voters. They represent 33 percent of Arizona's registered voters. It's about three percentage points higher than the number of registered Democrats. It's the first time in state history that independents outnumber voters belonging to one of the two major political parties. It kind of brings me to the question of are, are these, are these, I keep saying these, I'm an independent. I mean, who's kidding who here? I'm, I'm an independent voter for a variety of reasons. We're back. This is Steve Sanchez and Jim Jones with Veterans in Politics. We have Katana L. Barnes, President of Independent Voters of Nevada. Katana? Yes. Hey, how you doing today, ma'am? Not too bad, thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve and Jim, for having me on air. Not a problem. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Katana Barnes. I'm the President of Independent Voters of Nevada. We were formed in the late summer of 2010. We're a grassroots independent organization working to connect and empower those who identify themselves as independents as well as those who are independent minded. I'm not an expert on the economy. Who's to blame? I'm a medical doctor. I am an expert, though. For 25 years, I've been practicing internal medicine, and I recognize disease when it's systemic and uncontrolled. And the two parties are strangling our democracy. And I believe that we as a nation have to now turn our attention to reforming the political process, to healing the political process and doing something about the partisanship. As independents, we support political reforms, comprehensive, nonpartisan restructuring of the political process. We think that's at the heart of the dysfunction in Washington. Mm. We have a whole set of prescriptions mm. for mm. reforms. What I think is important is that independents, which are the fastest growing group of American voters right now, really stay in and assert their voices because it's really the future that's important in terms of changing the political culture. Because without a change in the political culture, we're just going to keep going down this road of silliness. Okay. And Nancy Ross, director of National Organizing for IndependentVoting.org. You, you know, we've heard a lot about independent voters in the past, and it, it, no matter what, no matter how many people have said that they're independents, they usually end up voting for either a Democrat or Republican. Why would we expect it to be different in 2012? Well, good morning, Celeste, and thank you for having me on. I mean, I, just to say, I think what you heard is what Americans all over the country are feeling, and I think that's why 40 percent, actually, the polls show 38 to 40 percent of Americans consider themselves independents. They don't like partisanship. They don't like the intransigence in Washington. They're sick and tired of a process that isn't working. And what we found that the issue isn't whether they vote for a Democrat or Republican, there aren't many choices, but whether they, they want to vote for the best candidate. They want to vote for someone who they think will change the process. But the process is so locked up. But the majority of Americans don't belong to either party. A recent Gallup survey says that 38 percent of Americans consider themselves independents, key voters in the 2012 election, of course. So what do they think of the debt debate and who's winning? We're joined by a panel of independent voters. John Opdyke, he's the director for 
development for independentvoting.org. Gregory Moon, the president of Independent Voters of America, and Linda Rickey of Florida Sunshine Independence. Welcome to all of you. Good morning, Allison. Good morning. Good morning uh, Gregory, Allison. I want to start with you. And welcome back. I'm Gabrielle Komaramski. I'm Michael Cogdell for Nigel tonight. A federal judge in Greenville this morning heard arguments in a lawsuit that pits the South Carolina GOP against the state of South Carolina. It is a lawsuit that could change the way South Carolinians vote. Supporting the current open primary system is a coalition that includes members of the Legislative Black Caucus, the South Carolina Independence Party, and the Columbia Tea Party. So now it looks like the Republicans are setting up a process where they don't want Tea Party people, independents, blacks, white, red, or yellow that are not a part of the club to be a part of the political process. <laughs> We're also joined by Jason Olson, director of independentvoice.org, a political nonprofit that serves as the California branch of the independent movement. Independentvoice.org has been involved in numerous advocacy and ballot initiative campaigns to open the primary, reform redistricting, and implement public campaign financing. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much for having me. To add to what Omar is saying, maybe from a different angle, I mean, the, the, the folks who do these polls, they're drawing the wrong conclusions because they're asking the wrong questions. Michael, welcome to Pure Politics. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on. I think most people actually remember you or maybe saw you for the first time from that infamous political video from CNN last year during the session where you and former governor and current Democratic Senator Julian Carroll had a little bit of a run in. We, we... And then there was Rick Robel, an attorney from Ohio, the toughest of our voter crew, toughest on me and on the way the candidates have run the campaigns. Unfortunately, it's been political hype rather than facts and critical thinking. The, it's the media that, uh, and you're an exception, by the way, but so much of the media is caught up in favoring one candidate or another and pushing political views rather than giving us independent journalism. What are you most concerned about in terms of issues facing the country for whoever makes it into the White House tomorrow? Well, I think the political system needs to be changed. We need to get rid of these things that are creating professional politicians who run the country for the purpose of getting themselves reelected. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Stewart. I'm the chair of the New York County Independence Party and the founder of Politics for the People. It's great to have you all here with us tonight, and I want to give a special welcome to our C-SPAN audience. Tonight, we're going to be looking at the people versus the parties. And we have with us two of America's leading advocates for a restructuring of our political process, Jackie Salit and former Congressman Mickey Edwards. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. You look beautiful. Yes. <laughs> it's so great to see you. My name is Michelle McCleary, and I'm a national organizer with independentvoting.org. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Bullock, founder of Independent Pennsylvanians. Thank you. Michelle and I are so thrilled to welcome you today to Independence Rising, our seventh biannual Conference of Independence. And we want to welcome also C-SPAN here recording today's conference. Thank you. The video we just watched was a sample of what we like to call independent airtime. <laughs> the result of an ongoing campaign to bring the voices of independence directly to the public. Jen, I saw your name up there. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, what is the Pocono record? Now, Michelle, you mean to tell me you don't know the Pocono record? No, sorry. <laughs> well, we consider that the New York Times. Really? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Actually, it is. Actually, it's a weekly circulation of about 15,000, which printed my letter to the editor. All of those outlets that were listed in the video, large and small, hosted an independent spokesperson from our networks over the last 24 months. Well, congratulations. 
That's what I like to see. And I am going to get myself a subscription to that Pocono record. All right. <laughs> and now, please welcome two people who are at the nerve center of all we do here at Independent Voting the Director of National Organizing and the Director of National Outreach, Nancy Ross and Gwen Mandel. So welcome everyone, I'm Nancy Ross. It is really wonderful to see you here. It's such a great audience. And I'm Gwen Mantell. I'm the other half of Nancy and Gwen. <laughs> <laughs> Our job this morning is a little unconventional. We're going to introduce you, the audience. And now, drum roll please. Let's start with the people who have traveled the farthest. From the West Coast, please welcome Washington, Oregon, and California. <laughs> now a special mention here, last June, California held its first statewide election under the new voter-enacted top two nonpartisan primary system. And later on, we're gonna hear about the impact of this new system. And speaking of top two open primaries, hello to independent voters of Arizona. <laughs> They helped wage a campaign to bring top two open primaries to the Grand Canyon State. Later on, we'll hear the inside story of what the campaign accomplished and how the next stages are shaping up. Now moving to the mountain states, please welcome independent voters of Nevada and the Utah League of Independent Voters. Now, we're inspired by Katana Bonds of Reno and Randy Miller of Salt Lake City, who both guaranteed their delegation's presence here by reaching out to friends and supporters. That's how it works. It's the financial support of ordinary Americans that allows us to grow. And now, moving to the Midwest. Welcome, Michigan. Wisconsin. Wisconsin Group for an Independent Voice. United Independence of Illinois. And Independent Ohio. Now, the South is definitely in the house today. <laughs> so welcome to activists, it's a long list, from Tennessee, Independent Alabama, Independent Kentucky, Georgia Independent Voters, FloridaIndependentVoting.org, the Independence Party of South Carolina, the Committee for Open Primaries in Mississippi, and the Virginia Independent Voters Association. And a special shout out to North Carolina Independents. Yes. I especially want to welcome the college students of NCI 
who just conducted the largest poll ever of college independence across the country. <laughs> Will the NCI delegation please stand again so everybody could recognize you. <laughs> now swinging north to New England, we're delighted to welcome the Massachusetts Coalition of Independent Voters. And all of our activists from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. Yeah. Special mention to, goes to Joe Pickering of Maine, who's written a song just for the independent movement. It's called, This Flag is Mine, This Flag is Yours. Don't worry, Nancy and I are not going to sing it for you today. <laughs> <laughs> and please welcome our mid-Atlantic activists from Washington, D.C., New Jersey, New York State, Independent Movement of Maryland, and Independent Pennsylvanians. And a special hello to the student delegation from Penn State. a pleasure to welcome friends of the independent movement from overseas, from Bangladesh, Lemidon, Mexico, and Canada. Now a big thank you to the members of the New York City Independence Party delegation who are hosting us today. They represent one million independents across New York City. Will the county chairs of the New York City Independence Party please stand and take a bow? Nato Reyes of the Bronx. Bob Conroy of Brooklyn. Nancy Hanks of Queens. Kathy Stewart, who chairs the Manhattan Organization and Sarah Lyons, our Staten Island Chair. Thank you all. And to the entire audience, we're so glad you've joined us today. And Nancy and I want to say a heartfelt thank you to the wonderful team who works with us at National Headquarters to be in close touch with all of you. That's June Hirsch, Jessica Marta, and Michelle McCleary. Now this past November, Maine elected its former governor, a longtime independent to the U.S. Senate, and Angus King. Here's a special message from Senator King. Thank you for your invitation to the National Conference of Independent Voters. Unfortunately, my schedule does not allow me to attend. Being an independent has been a central tenant of all my campaigns. I have a portrait of President Kennedy hanging in my office with the following quote, let us not seek the Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer. Let us not, not, let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our own responsibility for the future. Thank you for your commitment to making positive political change. Sincerely, Angus King, U.S. Senator.